Well, hello, friends and followers, and happy Memorial Day. I spent some of Saturday trying to dog-proof this garage. Our dog, which is a miniature schnauzer, would grab a bubble wrap off the floor. This garage, I don't think, was that dog-proofed or clean for a puppy. Anyway, here's the garage situation now. And I removed all the fluorescent lights out of the garage ceiling and I put in these Philips LED lights that are direct replacement for fluorescent tubes in the ceiling. And those gave a lot more light output in this garage. So I'm happy with that. So the ham radio table, that was a work table and I used this table for an office table for years in my old residence and here I luckily had a gift of two new tables so this table has been relegated down to the garage and all this stuff on the floor or all these tools were on the floor they were all kind of piled up around here which was pretty bad so spent yesterday really getting this garage at least cleaned up a little more I, I definitely though have too many tools and I know that's an oxymoron for a guy, but these things are piling up. So I did acquire this, I think, to fix my sob or something a long time ago. And see what I mean? Just things fall on the floor around here. So anyway, this I car soft I bought to see there's still too many things here on the floor. I got this to fix the Mercedes MO five hundred I had. And the problem here is that things fall on the floor and break. This little saw now was cheaply made. It just hit the floor and broke, and the dog could eat that. So this thing is really, really... Anything that hits the floor and breaks is uh, badly made. So this was something my father-in-law had bought in Vancouver, Canada. It's probably made out of pot metal or something. Cheap Chinese stuff. That's where that goes. So I still should rid myself of some stuff here. It's all just piled up and a big mess still. Anyway, I got this toolbox in Rhode Island for fixing the ML500 that I had out there for two years. I can't say these are high quality tools in here. Mostly crap from auto parts stores. And I had them all jammed in there. And uh, I had these two black toolboxes with parts in them too. I should probably purge all that stuff. Still got this butane torch kit that's been around. These drill bits have been useful. This this thing is really useful. This this little bag here is a impact driver, which is really really useful when you're fixing a truck out in the uh, field there. I used to fix the uh, the ML 500 out in hotel parking lots. I've had these two red toolboxes since I worked at Hewlett Packard a long time ago. Father-in-law's toolbox, that red one. Anyway, and then and then I shipped this big toolbox home from. Massachusetts, you can see the uh, information on it. I probably shouldn't have brought this home. I'm not really using it, but this is the remainder of the tools that I used to uh, fix the uh, ML500. And now I see there's some room in here that I can stuff some more things in here and maybe clear off the desk. Anyway, I probably got to organize these and... These are like one-off tools. I mean, when am I ever gonna use this axle, this axle remover tool unless I'm working on an ML 500 or similar Mercedes? I don't know. Here's a wheel puller. If you don't work on cars a whole lot anymore. This stuff is pretty useless. Here's a socket set I bought. I, I should probably sell these things off on Craigslist or something. And then I'll probably need them, but I think traveling light is, uh, is a good thing, too. This house has two water heaters. Um, 
I only run one of them to save money. Rather interesting. Water pressure valve there. And this odd little pipe, I'm not sure where it went. It looks like it took, oh, that makes sense. It doesn't go to the refrigerator. I'm not sure where they went, but somebody just hacked it off. And I guess that's the water in from the outside. So anyway, then I did buy this toolbox for fixing cars a while back. I probably in early 2000 from Sears bought these jack stands recently to fix the Toyota oil. Still got an oil change pan over here for the Toyota, but makes a big mess to change oil. I'm not so sure I should even be bothering with it. As far as my house here, I've had this uh, Makita grinder for a while. Fantastic for projects. This bin here is full of tools I've had since 2002 or three or one when I fixed an MG. I tore apart an MG engine in my garage in my younger days. And these are probably all a uh, collection of those. I should probably sell off all the stuff because it just doesn't get used and it's in the way. You always want to have a floor jack though if you can afford one. This floor jack is identical to the one I had for lifting up the uh, Mercedes when I spent two years in Rhode Island and Massachusetts. So this box here, I have a spare keyboard. I got my friend Raymond one of these keyboards. If you have carpal tunnel, this keyboard is pretty good. It's mechanical buckle spring like IBM had. I have one upstairs on my computer, on the Apple computer, and I like this keyboard a lot, so I bought a spare one. Just in case, this bin here has been all the excess computer parts. And I have some air conditioning repair stuff in here too. I basically went through this bin yesterday and I, I got rid of eight power supplies for Dell and for Lovano computers and I put those on eBay because those were clogging up this bin. I still got these old routers, these old hubs here. Probably won't use those, but should get rid of stuff. So anyway, less is more in my book. Crosscut saws. There's a bike pump for the bicycle. I used this thing to paint a house I owned in 2004, paint the office and paint the walls. That thing was really useful. Haven't done any major painting since. And there you have it. So I've tried to uh, neaten up this garage. I really should go through these tools and sort them now. This was used for a Tentec display that I got from Columbia. I should probably sell off my display that I don't use in that thing. So I should probably organize these parts, these, these tools here a bit more. And, uh, and get with it. And this is the pool robot. There's some dog cages here. I still got mats from my old saw that I had, which I love. Mats for winter. I could organize all this stuff here. I guess this is for when we move out again. These boxes get packed back up. Uh, this is the famous World War II radio that is going to go out on Tuesday. People are bidding on it, but I'm not sure what it will go for. I don't really care. This is an 83 pound box. I just want it out of here. Got some hedge cutters, a ladder, one more ladder. This long pole here is for cutting off palm fronds for the palm trees in back. Because it's steep, it's hazardous to use. Got a sledgehammer to pick in here. I guess I bought the pick to uh, solve some problems I had with the yard here. And with a pool, you need the stuff. I bought lots of chlorine. The pool takes about half, half a uh, gallon of chlorine a day in the summer. And this is a famous dynamotor that I want to get out of here because it goes with the radio, but I wasn't going to include it. This thing weighs in probably, it's probably
probably 60 pounds or something. I don't know, but put new cables on it and it's got to go.